My name is Steven. I'm the CEO of UXV Technologies. I am very happy today that I will be able to host this webinar for you guys. And I'm very happy that you are taking your time to follow and watch this. The idea today is uh, to present our SROC and SRM concept and tell you a little about the history, how it works, the possibilities and what you can do with it. Okay. What I have for you today is Firstly, our SROC controller. The first SROC controller that UXV is putting out to the market is uh, based on a 7-inch Android solution. This is very suitable for the more tactical environment where you don't have a lot of space. Um, the 7-inch Android controller have a lot of possibilities. What I'm going to go through is uh, the possibilities with the controller, the possibilities with the standard, and then I'm also going to go through a little bit about the history. This has been done together with uh, DIU as a long effort. It consists both of uh, hardware, it consists of software, and it consists of testing. This is done at different facilities where it has been tested to the maximum in terms of durability, uh, usability tests, and many, many more things. We have done this over a long period of time because this needs a lot of interactions with the end users but also this is a broader industry collaboration. What does a broader industry collaboration mean? This means that we have actually done a, a deeper adaptation between many different drones, many different UGVs and other robotic platforms, but not just that as a part of the controller and the software, but this also consists of almost all the radios that you might know or are used to, to work with in your industry. The SRM standard stands for Swappable Radio Module and this is because that you will be able to reconfigure the SROC controller directly in the field as a hot swappable manner. The SROC controller has been optimized to all the inputs which has been given from all the end users and the potential users and to operate the vehicles, the robotic systems, the drones that we know right now and then also the foreseeable future. This is the ISRA controller. The ISRA controller has two joysticks in the front. It has a 5D button here. It has a push button here, push button here and two push buttons here. It has two shoulder buttons and two one axis joysticks at the back. Up here you have the on off switch which will hibernate the tablet and at the front we have a variety of soft buttons which also have color coding which can be controlled through RGB LED. These soft buttons give the possibilities to first of all control functions of the tablet such as brightness, speaker, night vision mode and a lot of other stuff. It has a variety of soft buttons on the other side which will help you quickly initialize a program such as ATAC, QGC, WMI, network monitor and a lot of other things that you might want to have handy with just a push of a button. We know it's very cool with a uh, touchscreen but all critical interfaces on this controller is actually also substituted with a real button. Another important thing is also on the back side we have dead man switches or operator presence. The operator present buttons give the possibility to disable any uh, button input unless these are pressed. It's software configurable if you would like to use one of them or both of them. Other than that, the tablet is IP65. It's built for the mil 10 g standard. It's drop safe and then it has a very nice sunlight readable anti-reflective screen. On the back side you'll find room for two batteries and the SRM interface. The two batteries are located right here and the SRM interface is located right here. Another important thing which we have used a lot of time on is working together with the Knit Warrior team. That means that the tablet is through a Knit Warrior port right here enabled so it can actually connect directly to a Knit Warrior hub 
and can be connected to the rest of the systems on the user. That means that this can also serve as an end-use device. End-use device gives the possibility to run a lot of other applications, which you would like when you are out in the field, and then you're harmonizing down to having one piece of kit. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the SRM, the swappable radio module, which has been done in good collaboration with all the market leading actors. So the first I would like to present is uh, the SRM-L. There is two categories. There is an SRM-L and then there is an SRM-S. The distinctions between the S and the L is how much power consumption they will draw. On the SRM-L, you have an embedded battery on the bottom, which is not optional, where on the SRM-S, it's optional. That means you can choose to have the uh, twist-on battery or not as a configuration of the radio. Due to the fact of the SRML radios, they are more high power and therefore they consume more. Therefore, in order to have other controllers that cannot deliver this power, you need to have that as a possibility to deliver the power. Simply take the controller and the radio and swap it in through the rail system. Now I have reconfigured a SRO controller to work with a persistent systems radio. Okay. Once you have connected the radio, the software will um, identify which radio you have attached and then it can also, with the correct software, configure the, ra the radio for the vehicle that you need. This is the uh, SRML, which works with the uh, persistent systems. I'm next going to show here a Silvus Streamcaster. This is a Silvus 4200 as a SRML standard. Again, you take it and you mount it. It's quite straightforward. As a part of the standard, we have also done radios together with trellisware. Here you have the trellisware radio. We have done a radio together with Doodle Labs. This is the Helix. This is with the twist on battery. This is the Helix without the twist on battery. This is MicroHard. We support all the Pico series. That means that everything from the, uh, the 2450s to the 1800, all in the Pico series, is supported on the SRM standard. And here we have a SDR radio. This is a SDR radio, which you can reconfigure directly in the field to do a different kind of signet intelligence gathering where you can display and process this on the controller. Other equipment, such as interfaces to other radios through an external connector. This one is a uh, SRMS to ODU with Ethernet. And this gives the possibility to uh, connect an external Ethernet device. When you look at all these radios, you will be able to see on the back side, right here, you will find there is a small compartment. And that's because that all of the radios also is a, um, can host an SD card. This SD card can be uh, disabled mechanically, so you cannot have any onboard memory. But it's also optional that you can mount an SD card, so you can take terrain data, mission data, and also recordings from the mission and from the operation, and save it at this one, and then you can take it back with you. As other accessories to our infrastructure, I will then show you a tactical pouch. This fits in the MOLLE system. You can take this tactical pouch and then you can fit the controller inside. This goes in your existing MOLLE system. We also have MOLLE adapters for the SRMS and SRML, which can go directly to a NIP warrior. You can click them in like this. 
And then we also have um, chest mount systems for the controllers. This chest mount can actually telescope up and down in front of the face of the user and you can control an adjustable angle. This helps removing um, neck pain on the lower, longer periods of operation, but also gives the possibility to uh, move the screen close to the side of the operator and therefore do not distract them. As a part of this function, as you can of course easily remove the, uh, the tablet or the controller, you can take it off like this. And another thing, you can also always you can always put it up, but you need to use a button to release it. That means that if you need to jump because of an unexpected situation, it will always fold up and will not be in the way of you. So now when we talk about the advantages of having a radio agnostic system, this is actually also possible through a vehicle integration where you can actually adopt this on the vehicle side too. This should give you as an integrator and a user the possibilities to reconfigure the controller, the vehicle for the mission in terms of range, operation, frequency, and also cost. There is a variety of ra radios which I have presented here today. All of them are in different cost category with different performance parameters. And this is important when you configure a vehicle either for the operation and the cost of the operation and the risk and the advantages that you would like to have. That means UXV also offers vehicle sites, what we call vehicle docks, and can customize these for you so you can have the possibility to have a nice, sleek integration into your vehicle. Another thing what this brings is the possibility to also, as an integrator and a robotic systems provider, is now also to provide these options to your customers and not being able to take all these decisions yourself and get locked in. We believe in these open standards where we use software, where you can install whatever software you would like to have on the controller, and also with an open standard such as the SRM interface, so you can actually reconfigure the system, but also design it so you do not have limitations in the design in terms of the communication and the controller. I'm very happy that you guys took your time to see what UXV had now to present. This is our first webinar. I promise you it will not be the last. So stay tuned and follow our LinkedIn to see for new updates and when we announce the next webinar where there will be a lot of new things that we will show you. Thank you for joining. And have a nice day.